resurrection of Jesus didn't happen, it's a house of cards. You sure you want to give me that loaded gun? So I went to see The Case for Christ last Friday. Up until Friday, I had absolutely no intention of seeing the film because Christian movies tend to be lame. There are exceptions like The Passion of the Christ and Ben-Hur, but in general, I am not impressed with Christian movies. That's just me. You may love Christian movies, have fun, don't invite me. Apart from that, I already knew the story. I had the audio version of The Case for Christ in prison. I listened to the audiobook six or seven times while I was washing windows every morning in the dorm. Why, in the name of common sense, would I want to watch a movie telling the same story I've heard over and over and over? But here's how I ended up watching it. I flew down to North Carolina last Wednesday to speak at UNC, and the airline lost my luggage. I finally got it back and flew home Thursday night, and they lost my luggage again. So they were 0 for 2. And I understand how this happens. They put my bag on the plane. The plane goes up. The plane comes down. Hey, where's my bag? We don't know. One of life's great mysteries. I'm not trying to cause any problems, so I won't say which airline lost my stuff twice in a row. I'll just say that it was a famous American airline. I got back late on Thursday and went to sleep. Friday was my birthday. I don't take birthdays off. I work even harder to celebrate a new year of awesomeness. So I was planning to make a video on my birthday, but my microphone was in my lost luggage. As far as I was concerned, my birthday was ruined because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't make a video. My wife saw that I was enraged, so she said, let's go to a movie. I checked the movie schedule. Nothing whatsoever was playing, but I had to get out of the apartment, so we went to see The Case for Christ. The movie began exactly the way I had anticipated. Surprise, surprise, Lee Strobel is a reporter for the Chicago Tribune, and he's all about the facts. And I automatically started getting ticked off about minor details. For instance, the actor that played Lee Strobel sounded nothing like Lee Strobel. Lee Strobel has some weird accent. Hi, I'm Lee Strobel. Welcome to Faith Under Fire, where we'll be talking about my new book, The Case for Having So Many Cases. It's Strobel, not Strobel. Can't figure out where that accent is from. He used to live in Chicago, but I know a lot of people from Chicago, they don't talk like that. Then we get to the scene with my friend Gary Habermas. The actor sounds nothing like Gary Habermas. Gary sounds like some sort of apologetics rain man. Gotta look at the data. Plus two. Gotta have 12 facts. I like hockey. Definitely. Definitely 12 facts. Favorite sport is hockey. After that, Lee talked to William Lane Craig. The actor sounded nothing like William Lane Craig. Craig has this way of responding to silly objections in a serious manner, but with a hint of amusement, like he's trying not to laugh. Hi, Dr. Craig, this is Lee Strobel. What do you think about the Hindu claim that Jesus was reincarnated? Well, Lee, this is what scholars refer to as the holy cow hypothesis, according to which when the women showed up at Jesus' tomb and found it empty, they exclaimed, holy cow. But Hindu scholars have interpreted these words literally to mean that Jesus had actually returned as a cow. So I was picking on the movie for a while. I knew I couldn't make fun of it publicly, but I could tell Guillaume and Nabil and Paul that it was lame. Then something interesting happened. I was about a third of the way into the film and I started realizing this is actually a pretty good movie. The dialogue was well-written, the actors were excellent. I knew the story already, but it was told in a completely new way. And after that, it just kept getting better. By the end, my wife had cried like eight times and we started discussing who else we were going to bring to see it. Now, a review of a Christian movie basically needs to answer two questions. One, should Christians go see it? And two, should they bring their non-Christian friends? There are some Christian movies that no one should go see because they're awful. There are other Christian movies that are good, but they deal with Christian living or something that Christians might be interested in, but wouldn't be very compelling to non-Christians. Christians can go see these kinds of films, but they probably 
shouldn't bring their non-Christian friends. And then there are Christian movies that you want to bring your atheist and Muslim friends to see. So should Christians go see The Case for Christ? Absolutely. Don't wait for the DVD. Go watch it in the theater. Pastors, watch the film and then tell your congregations to go watch it. This is essential viewing. The main reason it's essential viewing is that Christians need to understand the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. A lot of people think that Christian apologists spend all their time trying to convince unbelievers that Christianity is true. That's false. Christian apologists spend most of their time trying to get Christians to understand that there's good evidence for Christianity so that Christians in general can be apologists, as we're called to be in 1 Peter 3.15. And the film presents a lot of the same information that apologists share in their presentations because Lee's going around and investigating the evidence. But it's in the context of a drama, so people who might not ordinarily sit through an apologetics presentation can nevertheless get the same information. But should Christians bring their atheist and Muslim friends to see it? Yes, and churches should buy a bunch of tickets and give them to their congregations and to campus ministries so that Christians can bring their non-Christian friends. And I'll tell you why. What the movie does exceptionally well, is weave together several threads, each of which is independently important, but when they all come together, they combine to form something much more powerful. So you've got your case for the resurrection and responses to the most common objections to the resurrection. Then you've got some important material about aggressive atheists tending to have distant or abusive fathers. Paul Witz's The Faith of the Fatherless deals with this topic Interesting to see it in a movie. There's a jab at Islam when Lee brings up what Muslims believe about Jesus surviving crucifixion and Dr. Metherill shoots down the Quran as a serious historical source because it comes six centuries after the time of Jesus. Then there are some key scripture verses. If you're a Christian and you believe that the word of God has power, you want to get some verses into people whenever possible, and the movie includes a variety of crucial verses. Then there's the gospel equation, believe plus receive equals become. And finally, you've got the story of James Dixon being convicted of shooting a cop. All of the evidence seemed to point towards his guilt, but a closer look showed that he was innocent. This is when Lee realizes that his bias prevented him from seeing the truth, and he wondered if his bias against Christianity could also be keeping him from seeing the truth, just as my bias against Christian films, my skepticism about Christian films that developed from so many bad experiences, kept me from seeing the truth about this film for the first 35 minutes or so. I'm now a believer that Christian films don't have to suck. Put all of that together into a good drama and you've got a new Christian classic. So, go see the movie and bring your friends. Stop blaming me and the church and God and do your job. One last thing. There's something that needs to be fixed before the DVD comes out. There needs to be an end credits scene. Let me set it up to make it easy. Lee has just become a Christian and he suddenly complains But Leslie, I don't know how to be a Christian. What do I do? If only there were someone to guide me. That's when there's a knock at the door. Lee opens it and sees this man who says, Hi, Lee. My name's Mark Middleburg. I've been sent here by the Almighty himself. Prepare to be discipled. Fade to black.